We start Shibuya off when Mekamaru dumbass ousting out his friends for a body he'd keep for three minutes straight. Mekamaru got tired of being that dude from Spongebob that was born on glass, bones, and paper skin. Bro said, get me out of here now. But this was all a part of his plan because he was planning to backstab Mahito in the back, but come on, bro. That's Mahito. You're a robot dude. You're not beating, bro. So Mekamaru in this big ass robot form starts attacking Mahito, shooting finger bombs out of his huh? Gundam and realizing, damn. I'm doing all this for nothing because my attacks cannot attack Mahito's soul. But Mekamaru baits Mahito out so we can shoot Mahito with a cylindrical bullet that pierces through his soul and it catches Mahito so off guard, bro. It explodes his arm and then Mekamaru think he's Seamus or something and hits Mahito while he's in the air with this bro kick, sending him flying into the forest. After Mekamaru got this hit off on Mahito, he starts gassing himself up like Piccolo after he absorbed Nail. And while Mahito's on the ground, Mekamaru says, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. He tries to shoot Mahito with another one of those bullets but Mahito says domain expansion and pause look at Mekamaru's face that is a face of a man that did not expect any of that to happen and just like that Mahito cooked Mekamaru mm -mm -mm. Mahito hits the calm as idle transfiguration and he starts walking away like he won the fight but Mekamaru activated a simple domain countering out Mahito's domain and he pierced him from the back right with one of his bullets that attacked Mahito's soul got the boy Mahito looking like Superfly at the end of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie and that boy Mekamaru is geeked. I'm talking about he starts screaming like a titan off of AOT. And then bro's like, I can fight Ghetto now. Whoa, whoa, cool your jets. You barely beat Mahito. You're punching way above your weight class, my guy. First of all, check and see if Mahito is really cooked or not. But Mahito was in fact not dead yet. He pulled up inside a big Mekamaru. He cut Mekamaru on the neck and then he's like, hey. Lil Mekamaru cook this dude, but Mini Mekamaru was pulling up on Mahito, doing absolutely nothing but getting ready to get cooked. But here come Mekamaru with his final domain, and he's getting ready to jam it into Mahito. But then Mahito catches Bro off guard, and he gets cooked. And we know he gets cooked because he has this flashback backstory about him and Miwa. But let's talk about it, bro. The Kyoto Jujutsu High gotta be the most unimposing group of individuals ever. I'm talking about the only real hitter on their squad is Toto. And I see bro hanging out with Yuji Mori. I see him hanging out with the actual people from his school. Like there's Momo, Miwa, Mekabaru, and Mai. Like everybody that goes to that school besides Toto is so ass, bro. We fast forward a little bit and now we're actually in Shibuya and Gojo has pulled up on the disaster curses. And I just feel bad for these individuals that gotta fight Gojo because like what do you even do if he doesn't want you to hit him and then Gojo just pulls up in front of both of them and they just gotta stand there and take it because they can't do nothing to Gojo if he don't want them to so Hanami and Jogo both try to punch at Gojo but Gojo catches Jogo's hand and has Jogo flip over him so he can dodge Hanami's kick and then he flips one more time ripping off Jogo's arm Hanami tries to punch Gojo, but Gojo blocks their punch with Jogo's broken off arm. And then he kicks Hanami in the sternum, sending Hanami flying back by 30,000 feet. And he still has Jogo in his hand, and he launches Jogo to where Hanami is. And bro, like, I'ma just need the both of y'all to stop fighting. Y'all can't do nothing to Gojo. He's literally just playing around with you guys. This is not going well. Like, whatever plan y'all had, throw it out the window, because it's not going to work. And after Gojo threw Jogo, that man Jogo started hitting the Jets. And he got to be the smartest dude here, because I do the same thing. But then Gojo pulls up on Hanami, rips the roots out of bro's eyes, and then Chosa pulls up using his blood manipulation, cooking civilians using their heads as bullets to try to attack Gojo. And then Gojo's like, We do not care. And then Jogo does a dummy mistake as he pulls back up on Gojo trying to do something. And then Gojo's like, You know what? I'm going to deal with you later. This giant ass piece of wood, they're out of juice. I'm finna walk them down, literally, as he starts intensifying infinity more and more, and he's just walking down on Hanami. And Jogo's like, hey, let Hanami go, I'ma start booming civilians. And Gojo does not even give Jogo the time of day. He don't even pay attention, he don't care. He got murder on his mind right now. And then Gojo turns Hanami into literal splat on the wall. But now Gojo has his sights on Jogo, and he says, Next one. Oh nah Jogo, your ass should have kept running. You should have never came back. But before Gojo gets the chance to cook Jogo, Ghetto pulls up and then he seals Gojo. I'm talking about bro saw his best friend's dead body walking and being alive and was Schmeckeldorfed. Schmeckeldorfed enough so to where Ghetto could lock Burrow inside the prison realm, sealing Gojo away for the entirety of Shibuya. And now we got Gojo chilling in a box for the entirety of Shibuya. We switch perspectives just to see what Yuji's doing and bro is full on beefing with a grasshopper. 
Yuji saw bro chomping off some humans. He was like, nah, uh can't let that slide. Pulled up on bro and kicked him straight in the mouth. And then he punched bro right in his bread basket through a wall. Grasshopper dude tried to hit Yuji, but Yuji did this artistic ass dodge getting out the way. And then the grasshopper curse starts growing wings and flying through walls trying to kick Yuji, but Yuji's just dodging out of the way. But then they both stop and Yuji pulls up in front of the grasshopper, quite literally standing on business in front of bro. And then they just start throwing hands like this is an episode of Joe. I'm talking about nothing but Mika 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 in the middle of this hallway. Bug dude dodges one of Yuji's right straights and tries to hit Yuji with this nasty counter. But Yuji turned around just fast enough to hit bro right in his hippocampus. And then Yuji just continued to violate with these flurry punches. Dropping this bug dude down to both knees, having bro hit the Abella Danger. And then Grasshopper dude tries to sneak Yuji with this spit attack, but he dodges that. But that was just a bait for the tail attack. But Yuji dodges it instead and punches bro right in his tail. Killing the grasshopper dude. So after Yuji, Megami, and Eno meet up, they realize they have to break the veil or no backup will be able to come through. And they theorize the people in control of the barrier would probably be in the most obvious position in order to power up the binding vow. So they immediately deduce it's probably that big giant red blinking tower over there. Meanwhile, the geriatric trio broke out of the hospice department. Apparently, Ghetto ran out of curse users and had to recruit the bottom of the barrel. Mario and Luigi G's third forgotten brother, Awasaka, some old ass grandma named Ogami, and the kid she needed to check her out of the home. Wonder if the place they're hiding will ever be figured out. Awasaka says there's no worries, because literally hundreds of transfigured humans are in the tower below. Those nerds would just have to up and fly past all of that nonsense and jump us up here. I mean, what are the odds of that? And Captain Obvious' whole squad just gets yoinked up in the air by Yuji and Nue like it's Inspector Gadget. Yuji just springs into action, marking his target as Mustachio Man, as he has all the barrier nails, and Yuji wraps him up tight with a rope, proceeding to smash into a nearby building and drop this man 40 stories. I mean, oh my god. His hips were already shaking just trying to hold that frail old body together, but that might just crumble old bull to dust. They pull up on Mario laying on the floor after the crash, and Fushiguro is not falling for the f Baba Booey. Stop the cap. <laughs> So that was a high enough fall for a penny to split a man's whole ass head. I saw that on Mythbusters. Old man is capping. And capping he was. Because the old fart picks himself up and is immediately ready for the smoke. Getting cooped up in that nursing home for 8 years leaves a lot of time for Ty Bo apparently because damn, my man is yoked. But no one told this old man, anime fights in the 2020s only consist of pure, cold-hearted, and unadulterated group jumpings. Cause they are both on him, beating the brakes off this old man, taking turns with it like respect for the elderly isn't a virtue in Japan. Divine Dog almost nips that bald ass head <laughs> right off. You. But for some reason, no matter what these dudes do, they cannot land a single critical hit. I swear, bro might as well be twirling his mustache with the kind of bullshit he's playing on these kids, just dancing between them before he whips out a shank to cut Yuji with. Fighting fair apparently was not taught in schools until after this man graduated. As Awasaka cuts Yuji's chest up and starts fighting back, Megami's toad wraps huh? Mustachio up like a lick of tongue and flings his ass right away. But it turns out, Bro has been living and breathing that haterade for over 20 years, and that's what's kept him so young and fit this whole time. It was Gojo literally living in this man's head rent free that kept him thriving. And he turns up on the dynamic duo feeling like Sasuke back in 08 with that hatred. Yuji and Megami have no choice but to come up with a workaround for old head's curse technique. And after playing a trick on my man, Megami gets an idea and summons up a horde of rabbits. Which don't let looks deceive you, they are probably some of the most heinous, violating smoke demons to ever mark the face of the earth. But we'll get into that later. Because as soon as those rabbits disappear, Awasaka realized he should have been more worried about the two ton elephant that's about to crash down on his ass. Somehow though, this buff ass old man survives and starts lifting the elephant up. Crazy shit. But still, leave it to one up man, Itadori Yuji, who just throws a full on car at Mustachio. 
Old Head catches that car like it's nothing. God damn. What is it in Japan's Wheaties and can I start eating? It? Megami calls on the jumping spree and old bro thinks they've fallen for his trap, but actually it's the other way around. Abasaka has no idea they figured out his curse technique. So when the big finishing move comes to land, he's not expecting that tongue from earlier to come out of nowhere and strike old boy with the softest touch ever to counteract his technique that inverts everything. Which means that soft ass tongue, pause, turned into a rock hard thrust. Pause. And now, Juju oh, Jumpfest is on, baby. They start rocking my man. Left, right, good, night. Taking turns now. They're punching his ass at the same time. Old bro is trying to fight back, but he stands no chance. Yuji steps in, gearing for that big final attack. But he tricks my man again, and one inch taps my man on the cheek, which actually, because of his technique, sends my man to the Baba Bowie Shadow Realm. R.I.P. Never should have checked yourself out of that hospice ward. Embarrassing yourself, and on the same year your brothers came out with a video game. <coughs> Embarrassing. Meanwhile, if we go back in time a bit, when Yuji and Megami separated the estranged third Mario triplet from the geriatric trio, Ino Takuma, Nanami's protege, and grade 2 sorcerer steps in to square up against Grandma Ogami. And, know, you know, some random child she abducted from a Santa lapsed at the mall and just started calling grandson? Ino reveals his true identity as <gasps> Schoolboy Q, and the fight is on. Hino reveals that he actually has the same technique as Grandma, but he uses it differently to summon spirit beasts. His first attack is a homing drill that Young Bull does his best to dodge while he's babysitting his grandma over there, who clearly left her walker at home. But my man loses his whole ass wrist to Eno's attack, and he'll never be able to stun on fools again with that Gucci watch. Eno takes advantage of the confusion during the drip check and conjures up his second spirit beast, transforming him into a Yuri on Ice character. Because bro is straight up graceful with these movements and combos, I will not lie. The two of them start squaring up and tossing <laughs> hands back and forth, but clearly Eno and his water sports have the advantage over the grandmother-grandson duo. Which I imagine is probably a similar result you'd see in Pornhub category rankings. But something ain't right. Not just with our next generation's fetish preferences, but with the whole fight in general. As Eno and Machine Gun Kelly continue duking it out, the grandma is over there chanting some rah-rah, and frankly, it's suspicious. It might be the growing pillar of cursed energy surrounding her, but you know, that's just me. Eno does try to stop it, but it's too late. The grandson eats some kind of pill, and the granny's ritual is complete. Eno fires off his homing drill, but the grandson catches it midair. And this grandma uses her seance ability to conjure up Toji Zenin's essence boy, of no all way, people into her grandson. Boy, oh, no way, this boy. is not good. Is that One Winged Angel playing in the background? But for some reason, despite the obvious boss music playing in the background and Toji's aura telling every muscle in Eno's body to escape, my man stares right through the sweat and attempts to square up. Eno raises his hand to attack, but just like in real life, as soon as Schoolboy Q appeared, he vanished, never to be seen again. Toji rips that mother Baba Bowie. beanie right off and just starts teeing Not off I on his face like Rocky Balboa, just beating that meat over and over and So right when Yuji and Megami finish patting themselves on the back for committing elder abuse, Enos just starts falling from the sky because, well, bro is toast face was destroyed beyond recognizability. His mother wouldn't even love him anymore. Ugly barnacle ass life for the rest of his days. Tragic. Down underground on the Shibuya train tracks. Mei Mei is straight up just embarrassing cursed Finn and Jake from Adventure Time as we speak. She's got Finn begging for his life right now actually. Talking about how even though she had this dumb technique that only lets her see through birds, she decided that instead of being depressed about it, she found this new cool alpha podcast, started hitting the gym every single day, and made her self-hatred everyone else's problem. Now that she's reached her physical peak, she can embarrass soy boys like Finn, who should have stayed back in 2013 where they belong. And Wee Wee feels like that's something to clap about. But you know one thing that being alpha does not solve? 
infectious disease. Because Ghetto summons up the smallpox deity in order to put Mei Mei back in her spot. And this special grade curse spirit immediately domain expansions on site and catches Mei Mei lacking within 0.2 seconds of appearing. But Mei Mei instantly breaks through a boulder like it was nothing and she keeps on doing it over and over and over again, but no matter how hard she tries, she keeps getting permanent. So she goes into hiding with her brother for a second to try and come up with a plan. After testing it on one of her birds, the curse clearly attacks the highest curse energy in the domain and kills them within three seconds. Now knowing that info, does Mei Mei plan to A. Fight honorably and use all her might to best the curse spirit. B. Think of a way to outsmart the technique and use a counter domain measure like simple domain to land a counter attack. C. Reveal her own domain expansion and go down fighting like a true jujutsu sorcerer. Or D. Sacrifice her little brother's life like he was cattle and cross her fingers like it's not all for nothing. And let me tell you, if you picked anything other than D, frankly, you just aren't depraved in your everyday life enough. Because little bro takes his place in the middle of the domain, raises his curse energy to the max, and is more than happy to kill himself right now in Minecraft or his older sister, the little simp. But when the smallpox curse falls for the bait, Wee Wee reveals he actually has simple domain. And Mei Mei is pulling up on that curse spirit from left field instantly blitzing up on the smallpox curse like a demon and slashes its arms clean off. Those shits go flying like a pinwheel in the air. And before the curse can even do anything about it, she makes her last crow inside the domain do a kamikaze strike right into its torso. Mei Mei couldn't have her little brother off himself, so I guess a crow will have to do for now. Wee Wee is marked safe from this incident, at least until her next minor inconvenience. Unlucky though, because immediately after the domain disperses, Fake Ghetto oh, enters the you? ring. And holy crap, this is gonna be good. Two high level sorcerers going at it, and we get to see what Brain Coon's real abilities actually are? This is gonna be a generational- <laughs> Wait, wait, what the- what, what the f- Baba Booey. Is this? No, n no, this is not the anime content I ordered. Cut, cut the feet, cut the- f we then go check up on Nobara to see what she's doing. The only thing she's doing is keeping the fraud championship around her waist. I'm talking about how the hell is Yuji the most useful out of the main trio? If I was Yuji, I'd make a team trade. I'd go up to Gojo and be like, <clears throat> uh, mm, can, we, can we trade out Nobara for Toto? Like, you know what I'm saying? But Nobara and this blonde haired chick are fighting Haruta. And like, bro is doing them dirty. Blonde haired chick is trying to run away from the squabbles because Nobara told her to. But Nobara over here hit nothing but straight air balls on Haruta's head. I'm talking about she's missing with her nails. She's missing with rocks. She's trying to drop on bro's head. She is hitting absolutely nothing on bro. But Haruta's weird little blade thing cuts blonde haired shorty's ankles and then he runs. I'm talking about full sprint, runs at shorty and kicks the ever living mess out of her in her stomach. Like that's kind of crazy. And then Nobara pulls up on Haruta. She tries to bonk bro on the head with her hammer, but Haruta was finna slash her with his sword and Nobara dodge out the way and then she got absolutely rocked in the way Mappa animated Nobara's brain jiggling in her head her skull rattling they was on demon timing because they did not have to do that at all I'm talking about shorty got a severe case of CTE right now they did not have to animate her skull like that like that's kind of insane and then big Nanami Kento pulls up and then he pulls up on Haruta and Haruta tries to slash and kick Donami and Nanami don't even budge. He's just staring a hole into this man Haruta's soul right now. And then Nanami punches Haruta and God damn, look at the impact and how far bro got sent flying. Nanami pulled up on Haruta again and this one frame had the JJK girlies in a chokehold for like a month straight. But Nanami punched Haruta in the grip, dropping bro down to the ground. But Nanami yeah, wasn't not done. He gripped bro up by the neck, punched him in the face, sending him out of this shopping mall. And then we switch over to Big Yuji. And Yuji jumped down the escalator just to see Choso Madass staring at Yuji, charging up this piercing blood, getting ready to cook him. And as Yuji is falling down the escalator, he is preparing to block the shot. But as soon, I'm talking about frame one, when the piercing blood technique touches Yuji's arm, Yuji was like, hold on, wait a minute, that hole kind of hurt. And he got out of the way of it. Choso then shot another one at Yuji, but Yuji is dodging it. And he pulls up on Choso and he tried to punch Choso, but Choso blocked it with his arm. And then Choso started geeking because he's like, hey, you killed my little brothers. 
I'm going to have to roll you up in a pack one time. So Choso starts conjuring up all this blood and Yuji's like, you really thought I was going to let you pop that off, big dog? He bounced off a wall and then he starts rolling on the ground with Choso. And then he slaps one of the little blood pellets out of Choso's hand and tries to punch him in the head. But Choso dodged. He kicked Yuji off of him, but Yuji looked up and he saw a bunch of blood beans getting ready to smoke him. So he had to get out of the way. And then Choso starts to violate with this nasty ass combo. He splashes Yuji up against the wall with this blood tsunami. He extracts all the blood off of Yuji and then he pulls up, punches bro right in the jugular, sweeps the leg, and then he was about to punish Yuji with this blood infused punch. But the only thing he did was graze his face. Yuji thought he was out of this Tekken loop, but Choso said, I got one more in me. He grabbed Yuji's arm, pulling him closer to him, and then he kicked Yuji in the chest with this piercing palm strike, sending him back. Getting hit with a Tekken combo is crazy because how do you come back from that? Bro just hit you with the Evo combo and now you're just standing there with the I eat ass face saying damn. Choso retracts all of his blood and now Yuji and Choso are staring at each other in this Mexican standoff. And then Yuji's like, I don't gotta get in my head shot off today on any of my plans so I'm gonna take the initiative. He jumps up in the air to bait Choso to shoot his piercing blood and Choso does. But Yuji's turtleneck ass dodges the beam. <laughs> Yuji then starts running at Choso but Choso's face looks a little too calm and if I was Yuji, I would have backed away. There's no way I'm running at you at top speed trying to punch you in the face and you're staring at me with the most calm bare face you can muster. I'm backing away. You got something planned? and I don't want to fall for it but Choso had three little blood pellets right behind Yuji and then bro said supernova and they start booming bro and then Choso made a blood knife and stabbed Yuji in both of his feet but as soon as he stabbed Yuji in his right foot Yuji said I'm gonna eat it and with the knife still in bro's foot Yuji kicks Choso right in the head Choso blocks but he didn't block Yuji's other kick as he spun around and kicked him right in the head and then Yuji fell down because, you know, he kind of got both of his feet stabbed, but he got back up and Chosa was on that ass again. I'm talking about this man Choso said, get back, it's forever. Because he boomed Yuji with a piercing blow. Just look at how Yuji's body ragdolled across this building. And then Mechamaru started banging Yuji's line. It turns out bro wasn't completely dead yet. And Mechamaru tells Yuji to go into the bathroom so he can turn on the sprinklers and dilute Choso's blood. And then Choso quickly follows Yuji into the bathroom. But Choso don't know fighting a high schooler in the bathroom gives them plus 10 to all stats. And Yuji, just like me for real, they used to call me the slapbox champion back in high school for real. So Yuji hits Choso with this sneak diversion fist, sending him bro all the way back to the bathroom. But Choso starts to use his blood manipulation and then the water starts bursting his blood. And Yuji starts walking up to Choso confidently. I know in his head he's saying his regular guy fight right now bro, just you and me. And I just now peeped that these nasty ass dudes are fighting in dirty toilet water. That's disgusting. Poop and pee excrements all in their shoes and socks now. I know they just caught about 14 diseases. But Yuji punches a great at Choso, Choso blocks, and then Yuji tried to get this triple kick combo off on Choso, but, but Choso blocked all three kicks and that had Yuji shook. Choso punched Yuji in the bread basket, and then Yuji and Choso just start trading blows in the middle of the bathroom. And then Choso threw yeah. Yuji into one of the stalls, and then the toilet water just starts erupting, and Yuji comes through that? Bro is a nasty neck ass dude, bro, that's disgusting. Bro finna have dysentery times 12 after the events of Shibuya. But Choso had enough of Yuji little filthy ass and he grabs him from out the nasty ass toilet water and throws him on the wall. He was finna punish Yuji but he got out of the way dodging the attack and then they start trading blows in the middle of the bathroom again. I'm talking about MAPPA choreography is on point, man. Most live actions out today could wish to have this level of choreography, but too bad MAPPA be putting their animators in a sweatshop. Let them go see their family, Jesus Christ, man. MAPPA just announced that there's a chainsaw movie coming out not too soon from now. But Yuji hemmed up Choso and hit him with this nasty ass headbutt. I know Yuji got a thick ass Neanderthal skull up under there, but then Choso tried to go for a punch and Yuji flipped out of it and kicked the ever living mess out of Choso on the head. Oh, nah. But Choso was keeping that goddamn thing on him this whole fight. He had a clot of blood being protected from the water and he boomed Yuji right in the liver. Oh, nah. And pause, bro. Wow. Look at this big ass chunk of blood that pierced through Yuji's liver. I know Sukuna can regenerate and all, but Yuji right now is on like 4% health because that's crazy. And Choso starts thinking to himself, he's like, damn, I got hit three times and it already feels like I want to take a nap, bro. This man, Yuji, got them hitters on him for real, for real. Choso then coats his right hand in blood to make an even stronger fist on him. And Yuji and Choso start sizing each other up. They and they stand just getting ready to scrap. Choso throws the first punch and <laughs> Yuji dodges. But as he's dodging, he's throwing a kick and Choso dodges that. And these two, man, these two warriors.
start going crazy in this bathroom, man. I know when the storyboarder brought this to the animators, the animators started gashing their eyes out, looking at bro, saying, what the hell is your problem, dude? I already get sunlight one hour a day, you gonna give me this? But they end this epic scrap off with Choso throwing Yuji into another stall, and then he conjures up a blood knife. He tries to stab Yuji right in the head, but Yuji blocks the knife, but then the blood disintegrates, and Yuji kicks Choso through about four bathroom stalls. Oh, nah. Yuji tried to pull up on bro finishing the combo, but Choso saw Wolverine the other day and decided to take Loki's flow word for word, bar for bar. And he cut this big ass chunk out of Yuji's shoulder. Tried to go for it again, but Yuji dodged. But Yuji then spun around the bathroom stall and kicked Choso in the head, and then he hurricane rounded bro to a wall. He pulled up on Choso using his right hand as a distraction, and with the left hand, he tried to go for a black flash. Not only did the black flash fail, but Choso reinforced the left side of his body. And then Choso said, it's time to violate. As he chopped this big, dumb, stupid ass chunk out of Yuji's shoulder. And then he punched the mess out of bro, sending him into a wall. And Choso was about to boom Yuji, but then he starts getting these memories that never even existed of him, Yuji, and his other two brothers chilling like a big ass family. And Choso got to be top two favorite schizophrenics in JJK, because like, where did this even come from? So now we switch over to Nanami, Naobito, and my girl Maki. They pull up on this little tiny plushy ass curse. And Naobito did not give Lil Bro a single chance. He got to bullying frame one, literally. I'm talking about Naobito turn Lil Bro into a frame and punch Bro right in the face. Then Dagon spits up all the bones from the humans he's eating up. And then little baby Dagon starts reminiscing about all the homies he had. And then he's like, Hanami, oh wait a minute. You sorcerers killed Hanami. And the moment bro's voice got deeper is the moment I would've been like, now hold on now. That wasn't any of us, that was Gojo. If you got a problem with that, you're gonna have to deal with him. And then Dagon transforms into big nigga. Nalbito then starts yapping about frames and the only thing I can think about is, bro is 73, how does he know this information? But now I mean smack Dagon to the ground cause he got tired of bro talking about nonsense. Maki pulled up just to get blocked and then Nalbito starts turning Dagon into frames. And then Nalbito starts juggling Dagon. I'm talking about Nalbito is juggling Dagon so hard that Mappa starts showing their animation process to us. Like, we didn't want to see this. Nalbito gets done juggling Dagon. And Nalbito punches Dagon right in the breadbasket while he's on the ground. And then Nalbito looks up and he's in Dagon's domain. I'm talking about bro's smirk went away real fast. And Nanami and Maki got transported into Dagon's domain too. And I know Nanami's sick and tired of this. It's like the second time in the span of a month bros got transported in someone's domain. And Dagon starts cooking these dudes with fish. And these cursed fish spirits are damn near attacking Nanami and Maki instantaneously. I'm talking about look how bro took a whole bite out of Nanami. And then they keep on coming bro. Five more fish start attacking Nanami. I would've gave up after the first one. Are you telling me I had to deal with five more of these dudes attaching onto my flesh? And and Nalbito over here trying to gauge what's happening and then Dagon just speed blitzes and punches Nalbito right in the face. And then Maki pulls up trying to help Nalbito but then 14 fish start attacking her and Dagon kicks Maki away like she's nothing. Zoidberg then has some fish to take Nalbito away. Maki gets up and calls Dagon an octo bitch. That's my goat for real. And then useless ass Megami comes in and does this one useful thing the entire arc. And that was to make a hole so that everybody can escape from out of Dagon's domain. But before he allowed everyone to escape, he threw Maki playful cloud and then Maki started beating Dagon in the head with playful cloud. Nanami's protecting Megami so that he can make this hole big enough for everyone to escape. And then Nalbito and Maki are now just jumping Dagon. And then after Nanami realizes what Megami's trying to do, he calls everybody in. He's like, hey, it's time to dip up out of here. But before anybody's able to jump through the hole, guess who pulls up? Told you. Fushiguro. Oh, nah. Nobody's gonna have a good day inside of Dagon's domain. Old boy comes from out this portal, robs Maki of playful cloud, and gets to work. And Nalbito's mean mugging the mess out of Toji right now and being like, who the hell is bro? I feel like I remember him from somewhere. Oh, I saw a dude at the family reunion three years ago. Oh, that's Toji. We're done. We're all actually finna die here. Dagon's dumbass says, oh, bro ain't got no cursed energy? He's not worth my time then. And then Dagon shoots a fish at Toji. And I just gotta say, I feel bad for this fish. 
because bro did not ask for what's about to happen to him bro just look at this face this is the face of a fish that realizes they just made a mistake as toji strikes the fish and vaporizes it into in existence and he parts to see like moses he pulls up on dagon hits him in the back of the head with a playful cloud and toji must have been hungry or something because he's bringing dagon to the crawfish boy the way he is cooking him right now Dagon shoots some fish at Toji. Toji blocks three with a playful cloud, and then he catches the other fish with his mouth. Toji's an animal, a literal beast. He stared down the tiger in the Amazon if he wanted to. And then Dagon starts keep blast spamming with fish. And Toji, if you don't get that lame ass mess out of my face, and then hits Dagon right in the sternum with playful cloud. But that was just a setup for Dagon because Dagon had some of his fish wrap around Toji's playful cloud and sink bro to the bottom of the ocean as some of his piranha fish started attacking him. And on top of that, he got these two big ass water roaches trying to eat Toji. But I don't know what Dagon thought that this was going to do because Toji just smacked the fish off of him. And then he bonked the big ass water roaches into each other. And now Toji just starts violating Dagon. He's hitting him with plates of cloud, jumping over him, hitting bro in the face with drop kicks like he is on a mission right now. And then this barbaric ass demon starts grinding playful cloud up against each other to make steaks? What is your problem? You didn't even need to do that. You was beating his ass with just these blunt ass objects before. But now you have sharp weapons on you, bro? Hey, yo, Maki, Nanami, you the only two dudes I care about in this domain, bro. Go ahead and get up out of here. Because if Toji turns his attention to either of you, y'all finna get shish kebobbed. And Dagon gets up, starts thinking to himself, damn, am I gonna lose? <laughs> you weren't gonna win, buddy, I tell you that. So Dagon starts flying up in the air, but now we told says, oh, nah, 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 nah. You cut my arm off. I'm not letting you get out of here unscathed. And he kicks Dagon closer to Toji. Toji pole vaults up into the air and stabs bro with the arm in the head. But then Dagon tried to pop some off with his mouth. But Toji said not today and stabbed him in his head again. With the third arm off of Playful Cloud, he breaks it off and starts beating the ever-living mess out of Dagon's face. Turn it bro into crawfish. I'm talking about turn that man into paste. So right after Daddy of the Year finishes chopping up the hibachi, everyone who happens to be present is sweating bullets right now. None of them want that kind of smoke they just witnessed, and rightfully so. Some kind of bad juju smoke going on here. The kind of smoke, when you smell it, you turn the other way, no matter how much strength you got packing. But luckily for them, Toji only had one thing on his mind. Ass whooping. And Megami had about 16 years of beatings built up. Toji just launches my man Megami straight out of the building huh? before anyone even has a chance to notice. But frankly, they've got bigger problems coming Hi, up. How are you? Now Toji is just walking up and down the street, sizing his son up. Moving so fast, he's there one minute and behind Megami the next. My man must have left the bathroom light on or something to deserve an ass whooping this heinous. Megami is doing his best to read the situation, but even he knows he's kind of outclassed here once Toji starts aiming that curse tool at him. Megami's the first one to lose the game of chicken and instantly summons up Rabbit Escape to try and get the f*** out of there. But Toji's smoke demon ass just rips right through the cloud of rabbits like it's nothing. Megami just barely gets out of the way. The chase is on. Megami's darting into factories, trying to give Toji the slip, but bro is not getting away from Speedy Gonzalez anytime soon. Just dropping down into that building like SWAT team on a Twitch streamer. Megami thinks, all right, F it. I guess I got no choice but to throw hands. And tell me how every single punch little bro throws just gets deflected. Toji's not even looking at his son, he's so disappointed right now. Backhands his ass with a might of 10 years of some of that, didn't I tell your ass to take your shoes off in the house? Even the rabbits start squaring up trying to defend Megami because they know their boy is getting cooked. Toji just grabs one of them by the ears and starts using it to knock the shit out of all the other ones. Megami even tries to combo Toji's ass with the gangster rabbits. And tell me how some bunnies are putting more moves on Toji than him? And it's still not enough. Toji grabs this rabbit by his <laughs> teeth, bro, like he ain't eat for days, and proceeds to follow this up with one of the most devious violations I think anime has seen in the Lord's Year of 2023. Toji throws his spear up into the air and says, "I, right, you rabbits want to jump? Come at me. Slams his boot into the floor with enough might to cause a f crater. Even gravity had to take a breather at this point because all them rabbits just start floating weightlessly. And I have never seen anyone do some shit like this in my whole entire life. 
Toji just starts poking at the rocks and the pieces of debris are rocketing full speed at these rabbits, like full on turning them to dust. And Toji keeps the pressure up. He's creating a bullet storm right now of rocks and revealing himself as the one sole reason white hairs are almost extinct in Tokyo. PETA, this is one enemy you do not want to antagonize. Stay out of this one. He slaughtered all them rabbits before Elmer Fudd even had time to put the rabbit season sign up. Because the hunt is over before a playful cloud even falls back into Toji's hands. And it's just Megami left staring back at his father like, uh, I wish I did not leave my backpack at home. Cut back to scene and little bro is running for his life. Toji is just a menace, by the way. Like he's oh, nemesis yeah. from Resident Evil 3. His aggro knows no bounds. Men is straight up to smack in his fist and kneecaps across Megami's chin relentlessly. Said, let me see that report card. A D in math? Flinging full Mack trucks at Megami <laughs> while he's just trying to catch his breath. Running all across the city, fighting to survive, and Toji is just using everything at his disposal to bully his son to the best of his ability. Megami's running up the stairs, and all of a sudden, a sewer cap almost takes his head clean off. And there's Toji, just spinning that shit like a DJ, throwing even more of them at him. I know I told your ass, turn that TV volume down. Megami is just so damn confused, but he doesn't even have time to think because the belt turned into sewer caps and then changed again now into exploding vehicles. The average plight of a poor child from the 90s, I fear. The sky isn't even safe at this point because Toji's ass was shot put champion back in class of 83 and he's pissed Megami did not uphold that family name. The curse tool he threw just barely misses Megami's skull by an inch, almost had him hanging from the 109 tower like an ornament. Megami catches a ride with Nue, and the only thought that's running through Megami's head as he keeps trying to escape is, God damn it, I can't wait till I'm 18, y'all never seeing me again. Megami knows his only hope is tricking Toji with a crazy strategy, but this man is relentless, busting down windows, breaking into office buildings, just to beat his son's ass, like this was the sole reason he became a father. Not even lightning can stop his ass, by the way. Toji's busting through skyscrapers and just chasing Megami with no end in sight. Megami just barely escapes getting turned into a shish kebab thanks to his toad shikigami's throat skills, but now they're in a tight, narrow alleyway, and it all comes down to this one moment. If Megami messes up the timing, it's over. Speedy Gonzalez rips through the air and goes to stab the out of his son. But luckily, Megami was quick enough to sneak one of Toji's feet down into the shadows, making the stab miss a vital point at least. Megami grabs hold of his dad and tries to stab him back for all those years he never came home with the milk and cigarettes. But just like a father running away from child support, as soon as he was in your grasp, he vanished. Toji was so quick, he dipped out of that situation before Megami could even cause damage. But Toji was so proud of his son for standing up for himself, he took his zombie self I'm out always. with a headshot and said, you all right, boy. Megami, who still has no idea what the f is going on, is like, um, okay. Thankfully, after all of that, though, Megami survived his ass whooping to live another day. Thank God Shoko can just heal him after. God damn it, not this asshole again. We start this fight off with Joko getting launched up in the air. He tries to burn Sukuna while he's in the air, but Sukuna says, no, uh, uh not on my watch, and, and dices Joko's arms up into little circles. And as soon, and I'm talking about frame one, after Sukuna cut off Joko's arms, he was behind, bro, and huh? he threw this goddamn rock at him. Joko, please, man, just, just give it a rest. You're not beating Sukuna, dude. Joko been watching too many Vegeta clips and then he starts Key Blast spamming and we all know that Key Blast spamming doesn't do anything to anybody. And bro, why is this man Sakuna platforming through Jogo's fire? Just start platforming like your Crash Bandicoot mid fight is kinda crazy bro. And then Sakuna pulled up in front of Jogo, blocked the punch, blocked the kick, and then he spun around Jogo, grabbed both his arms. Jogo was about to bubble him with fire, but Sukuna did the evil flight laugh and cut off Jogo's fingers. And then Mr. Krakatoa used his volcano head trying to boom Sukuna, but Sukuna dodged, grabbed Jogo by the back of his shirt, and, and threw him across the city like he was skipping rocks in a riverbed. Like honestly, what more do you have to show in a fight after you get skipped across the concrete for three minutes? And as soon as Jogo got up, Sukuna smacked Bray right back down with his axe hand, sending Jogo through about like four floors. 
Wow. I'm talking about he crumpled bro's volcano head. Look at that. Jogo starts getting heated and he makes this like fire lake and starts trying to boom Sukuna. But Sukuna is standing in one spot and just nonchalantly dodging all of the attacks Jogo is throwing at him. But to be very blunt, and someone standing completely still and you can't hit them a single time, I think that's more of a you problem than anything else, big dog. And then Jogo grabs two buildings and tries to smush Sukuna. And I just gotta say, what do you mean this didn't hit you, Sukuna? Bro just lied to my face. You're telling me nothing from this building hit you a single time? Nah, that's gotta be cat. Sukuna playing with Jogo so bad, bro started T-posing on him. That's insane. Jogo blinked his eye one time and saw Sukuna wasn't there and he started freaking out. To be honest, I would too. And then Sukuna pulls up on Jogo. He starts playing soccer with bro's body, kicking him through this building and everything. After Sukuna got done with this messy cosplay, he kicked Jogo out the building, pulled up on him, palmed bro's entire face, and then he decided to push bro through every floor on this building. And look at Jogo's jaw. He really was not prepared for this. He thought getting one lick off on Sukuna would have been light work, but now look at him, fighting for his life. And as Jogo's trying to fix his broken ass jaw, Sukuna pulls up on Jogo, picks him up by the back of his shirt. He says, are you done, bro? I feel like you could go a little bit harder. And then Jogo says, you know what? <laughs> you, you got it, bro. I'm dropping a meteor on your bitch ass. And this gotta be the funniest thing ever, bro, because Kusakabe and Panda saw this meteor and was like, mm, um, I don't think I want to get hit by that and was finna dip up out of there. And then Sukuna pulled up and told everybody to stop. And I know Panda and Kusakabe was doodling their parents because what do you mean stop? But I'd rather a meteor take me out than Sukuna torture me before I go. But Sukuna only did this and told him to dip last minute to strike fear in the hearts because he was bored or something because there is no reason for him to even do any of this. If Sukuna really wanted to, bro could have just destroyed the meteor. He was just having fun for real. And then the meteor drops and Jogo's like, even Sukuna would have got hit by that, bro. Ain't no way. Sukuna's just sitting on top of the meteor like, yo, uh, you didn't hit me with that, so you, you still kind of suck. Sukuna's then like, you know what? I'm going to beat you with your own specialty. And then he starts pulling out fire and Jogo is just schmeckledorfed. And Sukuna and Jogo start doing flame hand motions. They square up, and then Jogo died. We didn't even get to see bro get cooked. We go inside this white space, and then Jogo sees all of his dead homies. He's like, oh, I lost, huh? And then Sukuna pulls up in there. He's like, hey, don't even trip about it, big dog. Your ass was strong. Jogo starts crying, and then we go see the aftermath. And then we see Jogo's baked body. Bro literally got cooked. Fast forward just a little bit, and Megami is on his hands and knees, crawling his ass away from Haruta after taking a back shot. And Megami's realizing, yeah, he might be cooked after this one. Haruta's just basically waiting for him to bleed out at this point. But as we already know, if Megami is ever met with any minor inconvenience whatsoever, there is literally only one way to answer this riddle. Sacrificing himself and summoning Mahoraga. So Megami just starts yapping to buy time and explains the way the summoning ritual works, but Haruta is too busy being an asshole to pay attention till it's too late. Once the lights start turning off all dramatic like, it's only then he realizes he f***ed up. Suddenly, the shadows conjure up multiple howling dogs and frogs that can also howl for some reason before summoning the trump card of the ten shadows, the sealed divine general one of the most vile smoke demons to ever walk the earth, Maho Raga. Haruta is shitting himself as this thing's cocoon starts unraveling. And just as that camera starts zooming in on Megami and he smiles looking all evil and shit, bro gets knocked the f out. Then Maharaga just starts walking towards Haruta now and the sweat just starts dropping. He knows it's over. But on the other side of the city, Sakuna sensed the disturbance in the force and he zips right over to the scene immediately, saving Haruta's lame ass the second before he gets crushed. And thank God too, because if he didn't, Megami would have also died and the ritual would have ended. But now that Daddy Sakuna is here, shit's about to get real. He heals Megami up and tells Haruta to sit down and shut the f up. It's time for the chef to cook. And this shit's like a Mexican standoff. Two cowboys about to duel. Maharaga draws and fires first, slashing its big ass sword at Sakuna. But he just catches that shit with his arm, no problem. And I'm pretty sure swords are supposed to cut through arms, so I'd say that's a pretty significant feat. 
Sukuna is fast as f zipping around Maharaga on a dime and punching him in the f mitt, then following it up by showing it what a real slash attack looks like. Sukuna goes in for slash attack number two, but this time Maharaga counters and they both get sent flying back in the building's DBZ style. And of course, this demon Sakuna is just unfazed, walking out the building with popcorn and soda. And personally, the funny thing to me here is, bro thinks it's gross. You need to add butter, bro. See, this is what happens when you kill everyone and you don't make friends. How is someone ever supposed to tell you that information? What a dumbass philosophy, bro. Anyway, Sakuna slashes Maharaga again, and the Shikigami responds by broly dragging this mother face into the nearby skyscraper like okay someone finally is not afraid to step up to the king of curses and you can even tell sakuna is excited about this because he got the biggest smile on his face once he realizes maharaga is going to give him a real fight maharaga pounces on sakuna like a cat and starts swimming through this fucking skyscraper going after sakuna Meanwhile, the King of Curses is performing the best acrobatics of his entire career with those 10 out of 10 ballerina flips. But right now, these two are just getting started. Sakuna kicks him in his face again, but Maharaga throws his ass to Tim Butt 2. Not before Sakuna turns his entire arm into Swiss cheese, though. Maharaga responds by using a sound wave to smack Sakuna's ass back again to Tim Butt 2. Man should look into a rewards program or timeshare or something. None of this is impressive to Sakuna though, who's too busy pulling Maharaga's body parts out of his hood. These two are equally matched. The two of them throw a punch and land another classic DBZ clash. But then we switch modes and we turn into a JoJo's reference as Maharaga Aura Auras with all of his might to try and break Sakuna's heavy goal line defense. Sakuna wins the punching barrage and his dismantle attack cuts right through Maharaga for like the 18th time at this point. The entire building gets destroyed, but to be honest, after this fight, that's the least of the city of Tokyo's property damage concerns. Sakuna wraps Maharaga up in a cozy little rope and then full on lassos my man into a parking garage. Maharaga, in response, king of the one-ups. We all have that one friend just decides it's time to start volleying whole entire mobile vehicles. But somehow, it would seem Sakuna sprayed himself with car block before partaking in this fight because not a single one hits him. They, dead ass, all just brush off of him like water until he decides to kick one right back at Maharaga so fast it cuts through my man's head to the point he's got to stop it from falling off. And now, this is when shit really starts to get out of pocket because while these are DBZ brawling, they start entering areas of the city where people haven't even evacuated yet. And, well, the body count is about to start racking up. Sakuna throws his hands all over Maharaga's chest, pause, and starts dicing up this man point blank. But still, no damage, because Maharaga just keeps regenerating and nullifying all of it. Every single time that wheel turns on its head, Maharaga actually catches the King of Curses off guard and slices right at old boy's neck. But a new mouth appears randomly to block the sword. So I guess Sakuna can just do this whenever he wants with Yuji's body. A clever way for Sakuna to talk while Yuji was in control just became Sakuga filler. But Sakuna just keeps the pressure on and continues landing more and more hits on the Shikigami. To the point so much internal damage builds up inside Maharaga, bro just spits up like he swallowed Mentos and a bunch of coke. But again, that big dumb wheel turns and reverses everything. This time Sakuna notices for sure though, and when he goes for another slash attack, Maharaga responds by punching the shit out of your boy for another round trip again for the third time. And you rolled your eyes at that rewards program joke, you didn't think it would come back, but did you? Well now look who's losing out on these savings. The two of them are duking it out mid-air in a construction zone, and Sakuna is just playing with this fool now. Swinging from hooks and getting my man Maharaga stuck literally inches away from him behind phone lines and wire like he's Roadrunner. Maharaga's pretty f***ing determined though, I won't lie, dragging half the city with him at this point on his back to try and get his hands on Sakuna. Eventually though, as the two of them keep fighting, just adding more and more money onto that damage report by the way, 
somehow Maharaga gets a hold of a train and smacks Akuna with it. I mean, an entire train. Maharaga grows to the size of a kaiju and just refuses to elaborate on that. Not that Maharaga ever elaborates on anything, but you get what I'm saying. Sakuna slices the train apart like a can opener. However, this next attack from Maharaga makes Sakuna realize he might be in the Broly movie. Because when Sakuna blocks, he realizes Maharaga is hitting him with full-on cursed energy now. Which ultimately just makes Sakuna even more excited because no one loves a challenge more than him. Train-kun makes a surprise second appearance though to get revenge and threatens to send Sakuna into a whole nother anime isekai style. Something that puts fear even in the King of Curse's heart. You can see it on his face. Maharaga, again, the size of a skyscraper for no reason, smacks old boy with train kun as hard as he can. Maharaga picks the train up and crushes it, hoping Sakuna dies and reincarnates into Mashoku Tensei or some shit. Kaiju sized Maharaga throws the train right into the skyscraper, and Sakuna's in the building waiting for Maharaga to come in for round two, to which the Divine General happily obliges, again, all the way back to normal size for some reason. And as they continue to fight, surrounded with even more unfortunate innocent civilians, Sakuna performs even more backflips on their graves, even though at this point all the judges watching would have been diced to pieces. And he sends a large cleave attack that, surprisingly, Maharaga blocks and deflects. Which you'd probably be able to see and notice here if MAPPA employees weren't being held at gunpoint on negative 8 hours of sleep to animate this on schedule. But I digress, because this makes Sakuna go f bananas. He starts cackling maniacally while all these random innocent people are still just getting murked for being in the wrong place at the wrong time. Maharaga can clearly see Sakuna's curse technique, and Sakuna's rock hard at this. He strikes another Jojo's pose and slices Maharaga into a bunch of pieces before launching the Shikigami to Timba to himself so he can experience it for himself on a shared timeshare. A limited time offer that Maharaga was actually losing money, not taking. But as the beast drags itself out of the financial hole it just got thrown in, again, it begins to adapt and heal from all of this insane damage. Maharaga grabs a building and just starts whipping it around to throw at Sakuna, but this man is patiently waiting, sat right on top of a stoplight in full-on Yu Yu Hakusho spirit gun formation, just again ready for whatever cameras or judges are still alive to capture this masterpiece of destruction Sakuna's painting in the air. And literally, as entire chunks of the city start exploding everywhere, Sakuna just starts taking a bow. Again, literally, no one is alive to see this right now, bro. You killed everyone. Speaking of collateral damage, these is in the middle of their giant battle took an entire plane down, which Maharaga just rockets right off of, trying to gain momentum to fly at Sakuna. And Sakuna just smacks him with the whole ass Tokyo Tower, skewering him with it into a nearby pool. Electrical wires just start wrapping around Maharaga as the overload of power takes out all the lights in the nearby area. Such a tragic and sad way for Maharaga to go out. Maharaga must have seen Avatar Way of the Water though, because bro sucks all that shit up like a vacuum and blows it away to try and jump back into the fight with Sakuna. But honestly, this fight has gone on long enough. Sakuna's tired of this shit. He starts slashing my man Maharaga right back down into the ground. And as soon as that wheel starts turning again, Sakuna knows what was up. Said, ah, I knew it. You're just like herpes. You keep coming back. If you would have fought me in my previous stage without all of my shots, maybe you could have defeated me. But now I'd know just what to do. Jesse, it's time to cook. Domain expansion. Malevolent penicillin shot. And after doing some mathematical calculations that I'm not entirely sure how Sakuna figured out on the fly in such a little time, Sakuna deduces Megami is about 141 meters away right now. So, as long as Sakuna only kills literally everything in a 140 meter radius, we should all be good, right? 
And when slicing Maharaga up into a bunch of tiny pieces wasn't enough, Sukuna realized he would actually have to cook him. After all of that crazy damage and display, there wasn't even anyone left to give Sukuna all of the gold medals he earned for his Olympic showboating. Except for Haruta, who thought he got away with being a scumbag this arc. Nope, karma's a bitch. Absolutely not. Speaking of karma, just as Sukuna feels like Yuji might be coming back in control, he drops off Megami and goes back to the scene of the crime, just in time for Itadori to wake up and see the aftermath of his massacre. And if that ain't the most evil shit I've ever heard. <laughs> if that ain't the second most evil shit I've ever heard. After Sukuna switched back to Yuji and hit bro with the PTSD attack, we go see what Nanami is doing. Flashback. End of flashback. Nanami putting on his best two-faced cosplay and then he pulls up and he's like, damn, I really should have taken that trip to Malaysia. And as Nanami's walking down this corridor, we see Hi, Mojito. And he gets to the end of the corridor, he just sees a bunch of transfigured humans. And as he's dicing and cooking all these curses, he's just thinking about being on the beach, chilling. And Mojito pulls up on Nanami. And Itadori turns the corner to see what's going on. Nanami sees Yuji, he's like, damn. Hey, little bro, get it back in blood for me. And Mojito booms Nanami. I'm talking about turn that man Nanami into legs oh. on the ground. So Yuji trying to get the get back for his teacher pulls up on Mahito, but Mahito makes a transfigured human wall and Yuji's soft ass cannot punch it. And Mahito tries to boom Yuji with some spikes through this wall, but Yuji breaks him. And out from the wall comes this long ass worm thing that takes Yuji away. But as Yuji is blocking it, out from the mouth of the worm comes Mahito and he punches the mess out of Yuji in the face. Get that man Yuji permanent brain damage after that. But then Mahito makes another transfigured human wall and he starts closing both of them in. And I have no idea how these two are fighting in this tiny ass space, bro. My ass is getting claustrophobic just looking at it. And Mahito tries to throw the first punch, but Yuji dodges, goes up under, and kicks Mahito straight in the chin. Mahito then says, I'm not letting you pop that off again. Makes this spiky mace thing and tries to hit Yuji with it, but Yuji dodged. And Yuji must think he Seth Rollins or something because he hit Mahito with a curb stomp. So both Yuji and Mahito break out of this wall of flesh. Mahito makes a gun arm because of course he can. Then he starts trying to boom Yuji, but he misses and then they both go down this elevator. Mahito's up top and Yuji's inside and Yuji got that thing on him. That divergent fist he got, he's planning to boom Mahito, but Mahito breaks the cables and the elevator starts falling, but then he comes in. Mahito unserious ass tries to kiss Yuji, but transforms his lips into a knife. And if I'm Yuji right now and I just watch Mojito boom my teacher and I see bro try to kiss me, I'm giving him the death stare and violating him 10 times harder than I already was today. And then Mojito cuts the elevator in half and Yuji gets out of there. But while Mojito is exiting the elevator, he tries to boom Yuji with his gun hand one more time, but Yuji punches the bullet. Mojito said, oh word, that's crazy and hit the jets. And Yuji quickly followed, but bro turns the corner just to see two regular dudes. And a but if I'm Yuji, I'm using a few brain cells I have left scrambling in my brain and coming to the assertion that these two people aren't in fact real people. But Yuji dumbass pulls up in between both of them. He starts asking them questions. And then the guy that Yuji has his back to mouth open and out comes Mahito's fist. And it turns out Mahito was inside of bro, paws, wearing him like a suit. Bro saw Finn use the Jake suit one time and said yes. And then he turns the other dude right next to him into a sword. And then we get this little flashback an hour or so before the events of Shibuya. And Mahito made a doppelganger. And that doppelganger right now is currently fighting Nobara. <laughs> And Nobara pulls up on Mahito doing a big nothing. I'm talking about Mahito's dodging her nails and the ones that do hit aren't even doing nothing to Mahito because they can't attack his soul. And then Nobara throws one of her nails down at the ground. She activates all the nails that are left on the ground and pins Mahito down. Step it on, bro. Putting a nail in his forehead. And then Nobara hits Mahito with soul red. 
and it attacks Mojito's soul. Not only this one, but the one Yuji's fighting too. But that was the last time Nawara would do anything useful in the series ever again. And we switch back to Yuji, and Yuji takes full advantage of this. Yuji gets this nasty ass 16 hit combo off on Mojito. He pulls up on Mojito, sternum checks the mess out of him. Yuji is the combo off by giving Mojito tinnitus. And then Yuji grips Mojito up, bounces bro off a wall, and then kicks him through about four pillars. Yuji is uh, not, not finished though. He keeps on violating because he pulls up, hits him with this double sternum check, and he's still going. And Yuji is really just piecing Mahito up on his pillar. He is cooking, bro. We switch back to Nobara, and the clone Mahito says, You know what, Nobara? You got it. And then he dips up out of there. Just for the real Mahito to split up and make a break for it, too. Bro got tired of his head getting used as a punching bag. And then the two Mahitos meet in the middle. And then the stronger Mahito pulls up on Nobara, touching her face. And then the right side of her face explodes, booming her. And to put the cherry on top, bro, Mahito hits the very first black flash in the entirety of Shibuya. I'm talking about he crammed that thing into Yuji's chest, but Mahito did not give Yuji a single chance because he stretchy arm, bro, threw him into a wall, gripped him up one more time, threw him into another wall, and then kicked Yuji in the head like bro was a soccer ball. Bro then starts doing Yuji like how Hulk did Loki in Avengers. He is just violating my goat right now. Ain't no way. You don't understand why are you doing this, bro. I haven't did shit all day, bro. And you play you no matter what, bro. I don't <laughs> Bro, please, bro. Why are you doing <laughs> And as Mahito's getting ready to kill Yuji, guess who pops up to save the day? Big Goat Toto. The realest hooper in the goddamn series, man. And Toto gives Yuji the nastiest pep talk of all time. As Yuji is wallowing in self-pity on the floor, Toto's like, hey, bro, I know Sukuna might have taken over your body and killed hundreds and thousands of people. And I know Mahito might have just boomed Nanami and Nobara right in front of your eyes. But you got to suck it up, big dog. We're Jujutsu Sorcerers. This is part of the job. And then Yuji's like, all right, babe, you got it. Toto pulls up on Mahito and they start scrapping and Toto is cooking this man Mahito's brain with Boogie Woogie. The bait and switch powers of Boogie Woogie is crazy. So Mahito tries to bait out Boogie Woogie by throwing out an attack at Toto, making sure he dodges and then after the dodge, that's when he thinks the Boogie Woogie's gonna come. The Boogie Woogie came, but not what he expected happened because Yuji was right in front of Cuz's face charging up a black flash and he booms Mahito right in the chest him. the Toto Yuji team up gotta be top five team up some anime man these boys get business done Mahito's over here with his Amy Rose cosplay swinging these big ass hammers around hitting nothing but air balls Toto blocks both hammer strikes just to boogie woogie both him and Yuji up in the air and then Toto throws Yuji at Mahito and then Yuji turns into a sonic ball booming Mahito making a scene change like these boys is playing fighters or something and then Toto and Yuji start jumping Mahito like crazy but the only thing Mahito is doing is dodging and transfiguring his body to get out the way and then Mahito says enough of this and then drops all three of them down to the train tracks but pause, take a look at this man. Mahito should have knew he was going to lose after he dropped all three of them down to where Iron Man got jumped by Captain America wow. and Bucky. I'm talking about this is the exact place and Mahito is the jumpy. He is definitely losing the fight. And then Mahito throws down two trained transfigured humans, splitting up Yuji and Toto. And Mahito sets his sights on Toto. Toto hit the jets and then Mahito transfigured these two humans into swords. And started pursuing Toto again. Mahito tried to scissor Toto with the swords, but Toto caught both of them. And then Mahito stretchy armed his stomach trying to touch Toto. And then Toto clapped with what I presume to be his ass cheeks. And then he kicked Mahito into the elevator. So when Mahito's going up, he catches the stairs and he meets Yuji on the way. And then Yuji sets up the greatest lob for the boogie woogie for my schizophrenic king. And then Yuji throws the ever-living mess out of this rock, setting up for the Boogie Woogie. And I don't know how else to explain what the hell is going on inside of Toto's mind other than it's an LSD trip without the drugs. Because bro starts tweaking and he did all this just to lock himself so far into the zone to where he could hit a black flash. 
I'm talking about he crammed that hole right into Mojito's chest, sending him 30 feet back. But that didn't even do anything to broke cause Toto don't got any attacks that attacks Mahito's soul. And then the hardest frame in the JJK anime drops and it's this 3A panel with Mahito, Toto, and Yuji. And it says all three of them were at 120%. Let's go man, this fight finna get crazy crazy. And then Mahito upchucks a bunch of transfigured humans, does body repel, and we scene change one more time. So now that Toto and Yuji are staring off against Mahito, Toto and Yuji lock eyes, they lock in, Toto uses Boogie Woogie and replaces Yuji with Mahito. And then Yuji tries to kick Mahito's head clean straight off, but Mahito cut his own head off and became Migi from Parasite for a little bit. And then Yuji and Toto start boxing with Mahito's body, while Mahito goofy ass little head starts running around the battlefield and then he makes an iron golem or something, cause what the hell is this? I mean, I know what it is, but I just refuse to say his name every time I gotta talk about this thing. And then the Iron Golem starts hitting the jets towards Toto and Yuji. Toto switches places with it though, and I keep on forgetting that this Oonga Boonga ass nigga Toto was actually smart as hell. And Toto comes to the realization that the Mojito that him and Yuji were fighting is at 80%, while the one running around making these Iron Golems is at 20%, and that one is likely the main one. So Toto does Boogie Woogie one more time, and he teleports Yuji closer to that Mojito, and he starts boxing bro. And Toto decides to deal with the Iron Golem and thinking that it really ain't <laughs> tough and it does <laughs> Toto with this spinning back fist. Iron Golem wasn't finished though cause his sternum checked Toto and then he hit bro with a right hook sending him up into the building. I'm talking about bro ping pong through this floor out of the building onto the ground. Like that's insane. But Toto said alright that's enough out of you little nigga and he does little bro in with one punch. And then Toto smart ass again was like, okay, I get it. Instead of them having a bunch of health and punching really weak, they're really strong and have little to no health. But just as soon as bro figured it out, Mojito made two more iron golems that Toto got a box. And then Mojito starts rubbing his hands menacingly saying, I got that big ass nigga out the way. Now it's just me and you shorty. As he throws a bunch of transfigured humans at the ground, they turn into tentacles and then they launch Yuji right up into the air. Yuji recovered though. But as soon as Yuji recovered, nine more tentacles got more out of there and started beating his ass into this building. Uh, the tentacles not were kidding. not done juggling Yuji though because they launched him up into the air again. But Yuji, mm, me strong ass, picked up this building and cooked one of the tentacles as he started sliding on the other ones. Yuji pulled up on Mahito and tried to hit him with a drop kick. But Mahito intercepted Yuji, cop bro's foot, and when I say he threw the mess out of bro, I'm talking about he threw the mess out of Yuji. That bro's face bouncing off of cobblestone. I know you just ate a full week's worth of cement. And while Mahito's running to go finish off Yuji, he sees Toto there and he's like, man, I just wanted to beat Yuji by myself. What's this gorilla doing over here, bro? But now that it's two on one again, Mahito's like, damn, if I do the main, I'm gonna touch Sukuna. But not if I do it in 0.2 seconds. And Mahito hit off that domain expansion buzzer beater, getting a sure hit attack off on Toto, making sure he would never do Boogie Woogie ever again by attacking his hand. And Toto being the realest nigga in the series cut off his hand before it affected the rest of his body. I'm saying that's real hoops bro, nobody else doing it like him for real. And to further finish off Toto, he pulled up on bro, and hit Toto right in the abacus with a black flash. Oh, nah. But before it could do any significant damage, Toto got all of his cursed energy and put it to where Mahito was finna punch him so he could block most of the hit. And after Mahito hit that black flash, his technique was back and he was getting ready to cook Toto. But Toto's necklace drops to the ground and the schizophrenia demon awakens. I'm talking about nothing that's going on right now is happening at all, but that's what makes Toto my goat. He had a full imagination sequence where he was just beating Mahito's ass with his idol also beating his ass at the same time. Like, who else really doing it like him for real? But schizophrenia aside, but that was just a setup so Toto can use his last boogie woogie and clap with Mahito's hand. Switching with Yuji and he lands a black flash right on Mahito's jaw. And we take a look at Toto's hands and he got the clap. And he leaves the rest of the fight to Yuji because he really can't even help no more. And Mahito's like, damn, ain't no I got hit by another black flash, but that don't even matter for real. After I hit Toto with my black flash, I locked in. I know what I'm really capable of now. And he goes into his final form. And then these two warriors start running towards each other. Yuji tries to throw a kick at blood, but Mahito grabs Yuji's leg with his tendril, and then Mahito tried to attack Yuji with his tail, but Yuji said, man, if you get this lame ass mess off of me, he breaks Mahito's tendril off and steps on his tail. He then goes in, parries Mahito's punch, and then tries to punch him in the liver. God damn, the only thing we heard was this metal ass dink, and Yuji's like, damn, 
Bro's body is even harder than Choso's when I tried to hit him with Black Flash. And then Mahito throws a punch of Yuji. Yuji blocks. But he did not see the extendo blade popping out of Mahito's forearm. And he got cut for it. And then these boys start throwing mitts. I'm talking about they going around the circle and just throwing them hoes. But Mahito gets a couple slashes off on Yuji and it backs him off of him. But then Mahito points out his elbow. He got an elbow needle wow. attached to his arm. He shoots it at Yuji, but Yuji dodges. <laughs> he pulls up on Mahito and starts punching bro straight in the chest. And it's doing no damn. I'm talking about Yuji's doing a rated on Major Armstrong right now. He's doing flurry punches to bro's chest. And you just looking at him like, is this all you got, little nigga? But Mahito said, all right, that's enough out of that. He shot another elbow needle at Yuji, and he took a chunk of bro's mouth off, and then he hit him with his tail, sending him back. And then after Yuji got sent flying back, as soon as he got up, Mahito was on his ass because he pulled up on Yuji, palm bro's entire head, jumped in the air, and slammed him down to the ground, dropping bro down into a sewer. And Yuji, this stink booty ass nigga is just in the sewer water, bro. He was already fighting Choso and dirty ass doo doo pee pee water, and that was in sewer water? Yo ass needs 37,000 baths after Shibuya, bro. Mahito comes down to the sewer, and then Yuji gets up. He's like, if I'm gonna beat Mahito, I gotta hit bro with another black flash. And then he starts to walk, and his legs start to wobble. Mahito's like, oh yeah, that's free eats. He starts running at Yuji, and then his legs start wobbling. Mahito has some inner dialogue, but Yuji's over here beating his legs, trying to get some feeling back. And then Yuji's face is literally that meme, that face you make when you gotta lock in. And Yuji starts charging up a black flash. He pulls up on Mahito. Mahito saw a flash of black, and he backed well, away. He's like, nah, me, I'm not letting you get that off on me, stuff. gang. No, I'm sorry. Then Yuji starts charging up a black flash like he's going freaks or something, while Mahito's just zipping around the sewers. Mahito pulls up under as part of his transformation i don't know what for but then yuji's fist lands on mihito's shoulder and no black flash is there so mihito's like oh yeah this free eats he pulls out the extendo blade from his forearm but then yuji hit a time lag black flash on mihito and mihito was shook and yuji was finna boom mihito with another black flash but mihito was finna elbow needle him but big goat toto pulls up and he's like yo dumbass don't even know what a clap is for real a clap doesn't need hands bro it's an acclamation from the soul and he claps with his one hand and mihito thought boogie woogie was finna pop off so he attacked the pipes next to him Toto hit Mahito with the nastiest fake out of all time. Just for Mahito to turn around, it gets <laughs> boomed in the sternum with another black flash. Mm, mm. I'm talking about Yuji cooked Mahito with this, bro. Just look at this canyon in the side. Yuji blew off with this black flash, sending Mahito away. This is real hoops, man. And Yuji just starts slowly walking up on Mahito. And then Yuji says to Mahito, no matter what you are, bro, if you're a curse today, a new person tomorrow, another curse in the next three months, I'll kill you forever and ever, always until the end of time. And Mahito is over here shaking, trembling in his boots, and then they get transported into the snowy forest, and then Yuji becomes low tier god for a little bit, talking about his covenant. How about I take my goddamn covenant, chase you down in the middle of the snow, you're running. You see a bunch of us in black cloaks, Running quick, you see me in a gold cloak. And Yuji just playing with his food right now. He caught up to Mahito, kicked him further away just to walk him down some more. And guess who pulls up and ruins everybody's fun? Kenjaku. Kenjaku put Mahito in a pokeball and then ate, bro. And he starts toying with Yuji by making bro fall in this hole over and over. And then he hit his ass with Uzumaki, sitting Yuji down once and for all. And then my second favorite, Schizophrenia Demon, and JJK pulls up in Choso. And then Urame pulls up saying, hey, hey. Cut that out, bro. Like, what's, what's going on with you? But Chosa really don't give a damn, and he tries to boom Kenjaku and Urume with his piercing blood. And Kenjaku is just using his Shikigami to get out of the way of Choso's piercing blood. I'm talking about Choso is trying his absolute damnedest against Kenjaku. Piercing blood not working. The hands aren't working. Nothing is working against Kenjaku right now. I'm talking about Choso trying to get a full-on combo off on him, bro. But the only thing that happened to Choso was he got his arm pulled back and kneed in the face. But Kenjaku jumps off the rock penis and Choso quickly follows and then he's still throwing hands and Yuji and the rest of the Kyoto school lame ass niggas <clears throat> try to pull up on Kenjaku but then Urume is like erm did y'all forget I was also here and freezes all of them. Urume was gonna boom Choso but Yuji drop kicked the mess out of the ice getting them out of that predicament. 
And then the trash ass niggas from the Kyoto school that Mekamaru tried to say by not having them partake in Shibuya start trying to do something to Urame and Kenjaku when all their attacks are getting backed off, bro. The Urame is like, you know what? I'm tired of all y'all lames, bro. And then they freeze everybody once again. But not only that, they got ice shards getting ready to boom everybody. But a fat ass saves Yuji. And if I saw that, I would have locked in. But that fat ass just turned out to be Yuki Suki mode. And then after Yuki pulls up, Kenjaku's like, whoa, that's crazy. But anywho, I'm finna use Idol Transfiguration. I make about a thousand new Jujutsu Sorcerers. With contracts I formed from way back, I'm talking about maybe 500 years ago. And then he and Urume dip. But after that, we fast forward a couple of days and we see the return of the GOAT, Yuta Ogotsu. And we're seeing the aftermath of what happened to Shibuya with all these cursed spirits roaming around in Shibuya. And he saved this little girl's life from this curse. But then he got a call from the Jujutsu headquarters and he was like, damn, guess I'm finna go kill Yuji. Mm, he don't, he don't, he don't really mean that. Then we go see what big goat Yuji Itadori is doing. He pulls up on this bridge. He claps, a bunch of cursed spirits pop out. The screen fades to black. And that's the end of the Shibuya incident. And this arc was fire. Can't wait for JJK season three when we get to see that Maki glow up. But y'all not really ready for that, bro. But other than that, man, that's the end of the video. Moral of the story is... Yuji may be a punch kick merchant, but he's my punch kick merchant. But other than that, go follow the homie no operator. He might not be here in the outro saying all of his stuff, but I'll link all of it anyways because I'm a good homie. Other than that, man, I'm going to get up out of here. If you liked, like, comment, subscribe, do the good stuff, and uh, yeah, I'm out of here. Bye.